whenever I was 15, I had some troubling events happen. I was in high school at the time and I came home and there was a constable, my dad and my stepmom on the porch. I approached them and the constable's like, do you know these two people? I answered yes and he's like, well, do you feel comfortable living with them? But little did I know that that meant that I wasn't ever gonna see my mom again because nobody really explained the whole situation. So my dad kind of stepped in, took the parent role until I got to college. Uh, in 2016, I went to La Roche University and that's actually where I met this guy named Derek. He's been very crucial in my walk and growth in my faith. And ever since then, we've just been friends. Once I got to college, that's whenever I started to drink for the first time, I smoked for the first time. And then of course, after my first year in sophomore year, my stepmom found out that I was smoking. After she found out, she basically disowned me. That kind of sent me down a darker path. I started to drink and smoke a lot more. And then that's whenever the suicidal thoughts started to come down. So at the time I was a type two diabetic, so I just stopped taking my medication. I stopped eating healthy, stopped worrying about what I needed to do to keep my health right. I started to develop some digestive issues. And then out of nowhere, I remember submitting finals, but then I don't remember anything after that. Come to find out, I was found down for 48 hours. And once I got to the hospital, uh, they realized that I had DKA, which is diabetic ketoacidosis. My acid level in my blood was four times the normal limit. I had kidney failure, I had pancreatitis, and I had a rare form of pneumonia that forms in your blood, and that all led up to me being in a three-week medically induced coma. So in the coma, I flatlined three times, but two of them I did have visions. So the first one was I was at my childhood home with the best memories. However, it seemed like the memories were far from reach, and this thing just kept on chasing me. And no matter what I did, I tried to escape it, I tried to fight it. It got so tiresome after a few days where I just sat in the middle of the street and I'm like, God, I, I give up. I, I don't know what to do. And I just was tired of trying to take control of the situation. And after I gave everything to him, that's whenever I flatlined the third time. And I came to this white futuristic hospital and a nurse comes in and she's like, we're just gonna keep you for a few days, run a few tests. And she looked at me and she's like, do you have any questions for me? And I'm a big jokester, so I kind of like jokingly said, yeah, Q, tell me if God is real, but tell me why she turned around, looked me dead in the eye and said, I am real, look at what I did. And the moment she closed the door was the moment I woke up from the coma. So when I woke up from the coma, I couldn't feel anything from my neck down. So I had to relearn how to walk, talk and eat again. After all this, after I did complete my recovery, I then got connected with Derek again. I just felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and was like, just lay everything out on the table. So Derek was the first person that I talked to about, you know, how I really felt about my mother. And I've held that in for 11 years. And he kind of showed me APC. So the more I got connected with the church, I started to have deeper talks with Derek. And he started to mention something about water baptism. And I'm like, what is that? So of course, you know, I start looking into it. I came to the conclusion that I needed to basically leave my old life behind and basically submit more to God. I kind of I kind of seen it as like me kneeling in front of God, giving him everything. I was kind of raised and it was kind of embedded in my head that I have to control everything and that nobody else is going to do anything for me. That was my first time of ever giving everything over to someone else. So the day of the baptism, I arrived and I was attending the Saturday service and I was really, really nervous. I remember Derek telling me, he's like, in that moment, you have to think it's just you and God. So I literally just pictured God being the only person right there in front of me. The moment that I was dunked under and brought back up, I, I did have a, a wave of emotions. You know, I started crying. And over like the next week, I don't know what it was. It was just like, I had like this new joy over me. It honestly felt like I was a renewed person. I finally moved out of the mindset of having to control everything and I wanted to publicly declare that I am a new person and I have changed my ways. Uh, prior to me getting baptized, I wanted to control everything. Now I've learned to give it all over to God.